metformin in diabetics are very clear, but I haven't followed this closely. It's not my area. Um, is there, what's the data for metformin in people without diabetes? And what kind of studies were done? Are these proper control trials? And what oh, yeah. that, That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> they, this metformin, the use of metformin has been proposed by Life Extension Foundation in the States, uh, I think almost 10 years ago, right? Uh, and they, they, they collected many, many, uh, not many, many, they collected a number of uh, write-ups, but no uh, double-blind trial done, right? These are mainly just, uh, just like a proof of concept and things like that. So finally, right now, FDA, FDA America has actually started the trial on metformin itself. So they are actually in phase two now. So uh, that's the present situation. However, you know, the, uh, the people doing anti-agent medicine, they normally do not wait uh, until all the trials are out. Uh, uh, they are using it off-label metformin. So okay. I can send to you by email later on, uh, on the, uh, on the, Papers are written up so far, yeah. right? On, on, but, on, yeah. yeah, but for but for what effect? And the important thing, I guess, with these trials is the um, outcome measure, isn't it? Uh, that yes. gives yes. you the proof. So what do you actually measure in longevity? Uh, measure, I think, it, uh, you know, longevity is something that's very hard for you to measure because where's your end point, right? It's just difficult to do that. Problem. However, they are measuring other parameters, uh, the pathways as well as inflammation and sugar. We all know that uh, sugar causes inflammation. And the, one of the major effects of diabetes is because of high sugar that affects all the blood vessels and all the cells and the nerve cells and every other cells. So um, some other, I think, as I said just now, it works through the AMPK pathway. And the AMPK pathway is an established pathway. And they have done studies on um, monkeys, on starvation diet, not on starvation diet, on reducing, uh, on calorie restriction diet. And they do find, at least, at least in the monkeys, uh, that they live uh, about 20, 25% longer when they are put on a calorie restriction diet and metformin acts on that pathway, like calorie restriction. So instead of you really, having to eat only 80% full every day. So you, you eat 100% full, but you take metformin and it acts on the same way. I don't know the end point. They haven't uh, come up with the uh, results yet on human beings. I guess, I guess that's the point, right? To yeah. distinguish the, the effect of metformin and separate the effect of metformin on sugar, other on effects, sugar, yeah. on sugar effects and so forth. And it's all a question of the nature of evidence and the quality of the evidence just to understand what's going on. So if we look like statins, for a long time, statins was clearly useful in controlling your blood lipids, um, but whether it actually makes a difference 10 years down the line or 20 years down the line wasn't very clear. It's not clear whether it is only for people who have had coronaries and therefore have abnormal blood vessels, you know, um, uh, but statins have got 20, 25 year uh, records, track, record. uh, track records, and clearly mm. shows that uh, statins and lipid controls makes a big difference to longevity, certainly with people who have a I history of, of, of coronary artery disease. And then the data, if you were to use statins for people who uh, have not had a major heart attack, but have other evidence of, 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 of um, damaged arteries, which you can now detect by any number of means, uh, the long-term data is still very impressive. So for something like this, you know, to actually know whether it affects. And I bring this up only because if we look at other things that are supposed to work, the most famous I think is the Alzheimer's trial. Huh? Because people say Alzheimer's are due to these plaques in the brain and what these guys did was develop antibodies that cleared the plaque plaques. And the plaques on the brain scans disappeared completely before 
and six months later. But if you actually follow these patients, although you have achieved what you want to do with improve 100% improvement in scans, their cognitive function you know, uh, didn't change at all. Right? So uh, while it's very useful to have uh, what's called your you know, um, secondary indicators, uh, it's always nice to have. So I'll be very interested to know what the outcome measures have been used in the current trial for metformin in people who do not have diabetes. You know, Paul, uh, I agree with you to that. Conceptually, we expect it to, but whether it actually does is another issue, right? Yeah. You know, along the, in the first slide that was presented, I stressed that um, uh, nobody should take one item and say that this is the answer to the question. Uh, as I said, there are nine points there. I said, if I want to do really proper longevity medicine, I have to practice all nine points. Same thing with statins and cholesterol and cardiovascular disease. So I, I wouldn't say that if I prescribe statin alone, and that will take care of the problem of cardiovascular disease, because cardiovascular disease, like cancers, like any other chronic diseases, have multiple causes, and everything matters. So on top of statins, on top of controlling cholesterol, I would like to look at the other 14 items together, practice all 15 things, I think the result should be logically be much more effective than just prescribing, just lowering cholesterol alone. But that's, that's the critical thing. This. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's a critical factor you say, you know, the, the expectation that it is. The, you are very good at keeping to all 15. You know, in practice, if you give advice to somebody to do 15 things, very <laughs> often they don't keep they, doing they 15 do 12 things. Or 10. That's why <laughs> 12 or 10 is better than just one. Sort of, you know, say, listen, the, you know, the evidence for this is very good. You, know, you can't do the 15, do the 14, you know. <laughs> or if you can't do the 14, do this top two or three. I mean, I think yeah, that's the... We try. We try. But, the, 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 but that's the... Evidence. Of evidence, yeah. But that's but the point, good. isn't it? That we are all so lazy or uh, we are not so disciplined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe if I can follow up with from Paul's question, if you yes. can recommend for people like us in at this age group and with this propensity to not to do much uh, and to get instant cure, which are the top three that you would think we should do? I Maximum would say benefit with minimum <laughs> effort. Exercise is number one. Exercise. Well, that's a lot of effort. Yeah. Well, the many times exercise, you don't need that much effort. <laughs> <laughs> okay, exercise, yeah, all right. Yeah. Exercise yeah, is non-invasive. Yeah. The second? And it actually can be very cheap too. Uh. Exercise doesn't cost yeah. you much. Yeah, walking, right? brisk walking is good. Very enjoyable. I mean, mm. do the type of exercise that you like to do. Mm. You, not, you don't have to follow any particular person like me or anyone else. If mm. you don't like walking, go and do swimming. If you don't like swimming, go cycling. You know, just exercises. Because by exercising, you are detoxing at the mm. same time. Mm. Secondly, you are moving. You are training all the muscles, not only in your heart, your blood vessels, but also improve the circulation. And by improving circulation to all your organs, you are detoxing, you are also repairing. And the oxygen, the extra oxygen you take in from exercise will actually benefit every cell yep. in the body. Yep. That's number one. Number yeah. two is nutrition, definitely. Nutrition. Yeah. Nutrition. What you don't eat. When you, you say inflammation, you, you mean carbo, is it? No. Uh, not only carbo. Uh, balance. Oh, I think it's off again, is it right? No, no. 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 I'm really oh, okay. Yeah. You yeah. Okay. It. Yeah. Uh, not, it's not only carbo. We, we used to think that a balanced diet, everybody just talk about a balanced diet. What is exactly a balanced diet? It's very difficult for you to weigh how many calories, how many, how much, how many percentage of this. I, I think it would be wise to take a, number one, a organic food. I really believe in that. There's just too much contamination. That's why a lot of people are getting infertile when they're young, and then cancers appearing in younger and younger people. It's all contamination and pollution. So what you eat and what you don't eat are very important. So nutrition is a whole big subject that. Mm. I think it will take days, if not yeah. weeks or months to okay. discuss okay. about that, right? Okay. Yeah. The third one? And then, and then third one, I would think that many of us do need some supplementation, whether it's calcium or, or vitamin C or Bs or K or D. For example, in my practice, 
10 people come and see me, new patient come and see me, nine out of 10 is short of vitamin D, right? Yeah. So they said, oh, I, I go and play golf, but how come my vitamin D is still so low? <laughs> so there are again, many reasons why you, your, your production of vitamin D is low, even though you play golf. So m most of us, in fact, I'm taking 10,000 international units of vitamin D a day, right? No side effects whatsoever. So anyway, so mm. these are the three things that I think, to answer your question, these are mm. the three things that I, I think um, top of the list. Supplement. Uh, so exercise, nutrition, and supplement. Yeah. And then you can talk about aesthetic medicine if you want to, <laughs> you know, both <laughs> and all this. Uh, I would leave stem cells to the last. Now, the fourth thing that I like to talk about, actually, it will be hormonal replacement. Uh, once you grow old, all your, many of your hormones goes down. And then once you replace and rebalance your hormones properly, you'll find that um, it helps a lot in the quality of life. It may not be necessary longevity, but the quality of life. Especially in a man, if you are short of male hormones, as you grow older, from 40 onwards, you find that uh, your, your muscles, your, your, your immune system, your bones, your cognitive level, your reflex time, everything is actually controlled by hormones. See? Is that the pH? Are you talking about human growth hormone? No, no, not only. I'm talking about hormones in general. And the type of hormones that one should use should be a, as what you call bioidentical. The one's identical to what your body produces. Yes. Okay. Now, this is a very controversial subject. Uh, uh, there are doctors who will say that they even they rather die than use hormones. And then the other doctors say, well, everything is hormones. So <laughs> it's very individualistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I use hormones a lot. I'm on five hormones myself. And um, I'm also on the love hormone, oxytocin, right? So something that people, oh, why well, do you need the love hormone? Yes, I think I need, I need the love hormone uh, to give me the bonding with uh, my family, with uh, my wife, with people I, I like, I love which is going down, down the hill when you're older. You can see, you, you, if you watch the show, uh, what uh, this uh, Jack Lemon and the Walter Matthau show, you know, Grumpy Old Man, you see how, how we become when we are old. We, re we keep on repeating ourselves. We walk with a hunchback. Uh, of course, our external looks, you can see our own pictures from 20 years old, 30 years old, 60 years old, and 70 years old. A lot of changes. Right, not that it's that important, but your energy, your quality of life, right? Fortunately, our mind is the last one to go. We are still very sharp, mm. but at some stage you become dull, and you keep on repeating yourself, telling the same story again and again and again, and your circle of friends become uh, shrink. You don't want to be so sociable. You just only want to see a few people. The rest you just don't want to mix with. So I would say hormones are very important, but the how you use it, you know, uh, what sort of dosage, what type of hormones you use, it's all specialty by itself. It's not so, no. And I'm sure the future lies also with stem cells. Stem cells is, and genetics, are, these are, I mean, these are, you know, not for everybody, but it's coming. It's coming. Okay, thanks uh, for that. Yep. Can I just ask you a question? Uh, yeah, Paul. In case Harry, I thought one of the most fascinating, interesting things you mentioned mm -hmm. was the periods of fasting, where yes. information on that has sort of been becoming more and more obvious. Um, and whether there is evidence to show that you need to do this every day, uh, or whether sort of intermittent fasting, because, you know, fasting used to be... Uh, a religious uh, exercise, so once yes. a week, whether you are Muslim or Christian, and and we never thought of it as something not just for your religious or spiritual health, but in fact, um, the evidence shows quite clearly that when you go into fasting, your metabolism changes, you use up your fat stores more, and so forth. So you are very very uh, assiduous, and you do this almost every day. Uh, what's the data like? I mean, if if people were to fast for 16 hours, let's say once a week, is that, you know, or two days or whatever. What's your advice on that? As in, as in everything else, I think uh, if you do it, um, I would say as serious, if you do it regularly, it helps. Um, mm -hmm. For example, what I do is, you see, 
because of my own lifestyle, it, it gradually became part of me that I more or less breakfast. In fact, I used to believe that three meals a day is very important. I never missed it. And breakfast being the most important meal, I was told the most important, we were taught this most important meal. But after reading the, 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 the science behind intermittent fasting, I, I think it makes total sense that human beings are not meant to eat three or four meals a day. No, we are, uh, during the evolution, I uh, mean, we sometimes only eat one meal in two days, we have nothing to eat. But right now, because of the modernization, and globalization, we have so much to eat, you can eat 10, 10, 10 meals a day. So it has become a part of my lifestyle that I, nowadays I skip breakfast. I have only a cup of coffee with MCT oil in it because the oil will make me full. And if I need to, I eat one egg because I, I keep the calories in the morning to below 100 calories. So I allow one egg and uh, very often I don't even eat the egg. And then I wait until about 12 o'clock. I might have a little bite before lunch. Now, I think the important thing is not just only the fasting, but what you eat during the eight hours window, the eight hours window is important. If you eat a lot of sugar in the eight hours, you defeat the purpose of the fasting. So it is important to combine a good diet, not necessarily must be ketogenic diet, but a good diet uh, with the fasting to get the best result. But if you don't keep a diet, at least the fasting will help. The science is, like you said, is very straightforward. First, the 16 hours, your body burns up all the sugar in your liver or in your muscles or in your blood. Then you start burning your fat. That produces a bit of ketosis. And you fast for 24 hours. You move into the next phase of fasting where stem cells are stimulated, your own stem cells are stimulated, and autophagy is also initiated. So it is, um, it, it is, it is very interesting. And... As far as I'm concerned, it, it works. It works very well for me. Yeah, mm. and I also highly recommend to all of you, you know, to try it out. You can try a 14 hours fast instead of 16 hours, and gradually go to 16. Hello, we got less than one minute. Oh, okay. Mm. Last question. <laughs> uh, yeah. In case you are cut off. <laughs> uh, Last question. No. Can I if if anybody is interested, you can always uh, email to me. I'll send all the things to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Clement. Last question. Yeah. yeah. No, because I'm because uh, uh, from from what a simple guy like me understand. That's why I'm interested. In this human growth hormone. You see, from what I'm told, human growth hormone is everybody when you're born you have it. As you grow older, the human growth hormone deteriorate to it becomes a nothing. When it becomes yeah. nothing, and then your cells so all deteriorate. Nothing. When become old and everything gets bad, you know. So they, from what I've been told, in fact, uh, uh, there's a product called human growth 